Hello everyone. Welcome to another video update from the Beating Obesity channel. Uh, the topic I wanted to talk about today was maintenance and in terms of uh, maintaining a weight, maintaining your weight loss. But before I get into that, I just wanted to briefly uh, give an update as uh, to the status of a, a video interview I did. Um, I'm going to say I, it was in September and it was for the Six Miles to Supper, uh, which is another YouTube channel. Uh, Kayla is the um, channel owner over there and we did an interview and um, it was a very good interview. I was pleased with it and um, it's been doing well. I, I check in there once in a while because uh, you know, just to see if someone's asked me a question or, or whatnot and I've been following the, uh, um, the status of the uh, number of views and it's done very well. I mean, I think the last time I checked uh, before the it was before the end of the year, I, I checked it and it was like 8,000 views, which for me is huge. Um, something happened though recently and I just checked it again on Monday, um, this past Monday, and um, it was 16,000. And I just, uh, I said, wow, what happened? I, I posted a question on there, I asked Kayla, I said, wow, this is really taken off, do you know why? And she said she didn't know uh, somebody must have been linking to it. And so I started following uh, every day or so and looking, there's been like two or 3,000 views per day. So I don't know what's going on. I know that uh, I've been hit with a bunch of uh, new subscribers who I have a feeling are uh, referrals from that interview. Uh, and so I want to welcome everyone, uh, new people that came via that route, Six Miles to Supper. Uh, thanks. Um, I'm still a little puzzled. I don't know why, why it's getting sort of, for me, I call it viral. I mean, it's not really viral. It's the most viral thing I've been involved in. As of just right now, it's almost doubled again. I think uh, we're now over 30,000 views. Um, so maybe it's the time of year or, or I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, I'm happy for it uh, because of trying to get the word out. But um, if any, if anyone is not familiar with this interview, uh, check it out. It's going to be in the show notes. Uh, take another look at it. And uh, um, I mean, it's basically I tell my story for her channel, like I've told on this one. But uh, um, anyway, that's, that's the news of the day. I'm, involved in my first uh, semi-viral video. Um, so now let's talk about maintenance. Uh, I'm trying to be a little more responsive uh, to people who post requests, uh, uh, even though I've talked about maintenance um, at various times in the comment section, I thought I'll just make a video today uh, on maintenance because I do have some thoughts about it. Um, maintenance, you know, what are, what, what's the old saying that, uh, it's easy to lose weight. It's something like easy to lose weight, but what's really hard is keeping it off, uh, which is the maintenance part of it. I mean, isn't this what you've heard? I mean, we've all heard, I, I took this to be gospel, uh, and I have a different opinion now, um. Uh, after going through my latest weight loss story, uh, weight loss journey, uh, I don't think that's correct at all. Um, the losing weight part of it, to me, is not the easy part. Uh, that was the harder part, and the maintenance is the easy part. Um, and let me explain why, why I think that is, this perception that the weight loss is easy and maintenance hard, is because historically, everything that we've, all the attempts that we make to lose weight are the wrong attempt. They're the wrong method and the wrong approach. Um, and so therefore they fail. And so they fail because they're not sustainable. And that doesn't mean that uh, the maintenance failed, is the weight loss failed, the whole approach failed. 
Um, so so that, that, that to me, that's what I've learned. Um, if you do the right approach to weight loss, if you make the fundamental changes to your lifestyle and to habits, uh, you end up a different person with different habits and a different food plan and a different eating strategy. And you lose the weight and then you find out that, oh, maintenance, now that, I, now that I'm this new person with new habits, the maintenance isn't really an issue. Uh, I'll just tell you, um, you know, when I started this journey, I've said this many times, I started with really no plan and no high expectation at all that I would be successful. Um, and even when I had initial success and even when I was halfway to my goal, I, I really was just always waiting for it to fail because uh, I thought that's what, what always happens, you fail. And then I started to, you know, time went on, I went further and, and then I realized, well, I'm probably going to get to that uh, maintenance phase and so I better be ready for it. You know, what am I going to do? That's the hard part. Uh, you know, I've always been conditioned to believe that. So, you know, I sort of fretted about, okay, it looks like I'm going to reach my goal. How do I maintain it now? What do I do? Do I start eating different foods? Do I eat more often? What's going to be normal after I reach my goal? And to be honest, this had me a little bit, a little bit of anxiety because I didn't really know the answer. Uh, and even after I would, I had reached my goals in terms of weight loss. Um, I didn't know what to do next, and I sort of fumbled around for a while. I tried, actually, I tried, you know, eating one meal a day was instrumental in me reaching my goal. Um, I experimented for a couple of weeks eating like a couple times a day with, let's say, a snack around noon and then uh, then a full meal uh, later in the day. Uh, I did that for a while and realized I don't like that. I don't like to do that. I was forcing myself to do something I didn't want to do. And so I abandoned that. And then I tried even, I don't know, I tried some different kinds of foods. I felt that I had to change something because that's what maintenance was all about. And then the light bulb went on one day, and it seems obvious now looking back, I don't have to change anything. I didn't need to change anything. I've, the changes that already taken place, I needed to just relax and go on with my life and, and, and maintain. Um, and like I said, that was a light bulb moment. And I just started doing that. I said, I, I'm not going to try to enter some kind of a different phase now that I've reached a, the weight loss goal. And, and the aha moment was when I realized, okay, I liked having a goal, and I'd been pursuing this goal for a long time. And so I just found new goals. And, and that's, I guess, the whole point of what I want to strive uh, to make today is that uh, maintenance for me is converting to another goal, to a different set of goals. Okay, you've got... You, you achieve your weight loss, and really the focus for a long time is just mainly on the scale. I understand that. It's natural. You're looking at that scale. You're driven by the, the weight, and, and not solely that, but it's, it's, let's be honest, it's largely what it is. Um, so I came up with some different goals, uh, fitness goals, uh, running goals. I wanted to run farther and run faster and work out a certain uh, number of times per week and, uh, and, and, and build some strength. Um, sure, I wanted to maintain weight, but that, that really was a secondary goal, uh, which I realized would probably be a natural outcome of just doing the same thing I've been doing. Yeah, so it's just new goals. Um, to keep, keep the motivation going and 
keep moving forward. Uh, that combined with everything you've been doing, the weight takes care of itself, like I said. You know, the weight loss, it, it kind of, you know, it, it's rapid in the beginning. Uh, it was for me, it was very rapid and very consistent, but then, you know, as you start approaching your goal, it, it starts leveling, and, and then it leveled more, and then it's been, you know, it's been, for me, about the last eight or nine months, it's been almost a flat line. Uh, you know, within, you know, it varies within a range of about uh, five pounds plus or minus, excuse me, like actually like three pounds plus or minus. Uh, and I don't have to do anything extraordinary to, to maintain that. It's just, it just happens based on the habits that I created during the weight loss phase. So that's basically it. My, my theory is that maintenance sh should be the easy part, and it is the easy part, depending on how you lose the weight. So that's the main message. Um, you know, and I should, you know, maybe define uh, the wrong ways to lose weight, the ones that always fail, and I went over them before, it's the ones that emphasize uh, caloric restriction, uh, massive amounts of exercise, certain uh, food, uh, special food programs or like Weight Watchers or things like that, you know, things that, things that just are not going to be a permanent lifestyle. I mean, you can try it, sure, you might lose some weight. You're, you're not going to maintain that, I don't think. I mean, maybe, the, maybe there's some people that do. I don't want to, you know, make blanket statements, but I don't think that I think those businesses are around because people fail uh, in them and so that people are always trying to get into, you know, they always got new customers because people ultimately don't succeed in, uh, on it. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff to fail uh, that, that will lead to a failure that's not sustainable and I've done them all, uh, most of them, and I failed, as I've said before, all, all my life up until recently. And the things that the habits that didn't fail for me were when I started focusing on number one, how often I was eating. And I, and I just mentioned this last week when I talked about fasting. Uh, you know, I, I went to one meal a day and eating less often. I did some fasting also. Uh, this to me was a fundamental change that, that unlocked everything. Uh, and yeah, sure, it was a little unnatural at first and took some getting used to, but once you do that, you, you, you become like free. Uh, you, you're free to eat in a new way. Uh, you kind of live with some hunger a little bit at certain times a day. I mean, it, but it's not severe. And after a while, it becomes natural and not hung, not, you're not hungry anymore. Actually, you end up conquering hunger, and that's... And that's another theme I've tried to stress in the past. Your weight loss journey should be less focused on the scale and more focused on conquering hunger. Because if you can do that, you're golden, you're there, you're going to succeed, and maintenance, forget about it, it's going to be a breeze if you've conquered hunger. Uh, if you haven't conquered hunger, I'm afraid you're... You, you're gonna fail. It's gonna it's gonna drag you uh, back into the pits. Um, so, f in my opinion, what helped me conquer hunger was living with some hunger. And by uh, living with hunger, fasting forced me to live with some hunger. Fasting plus going through the the entire 23 hours of a day without eating, and just eating once a day, uh, but but making a big meal once a day. That taught me how to have some hunger and have some, have some uh, feasting uh, along with the hunger. And it made f for just, once you get into that, it's such a natural rhythm. I can't recommend it enough. Um, not everyone, I think, is cut out to do one meal a day, but I really, I really recommend uh, if you got a way to lose, uh, moving in that direction. It might seem unnatural at first, it might be a little hard getting there, but 
if you can chip away on it and arrive at that, you, you're going to find uh, you're going to find it's a whole new world. Um, of course, the no-brainer things in, in terms of being successful are what I've mentioned so many times uh, on the what to eat, um, and it's you know sugar, uh, grains. Uh, seed oils and processed and packaged foods. I mean, sugary drinks, I mean, those are, those are obvious. They're so obvious, everybody knows about them. Um, I know people will say about, when you, when you start talking about what's the best way to eat or lose weight, <clears throat> you know, I, I've seen examples where people can, uh, people can be fit and healthy on a, on a high carb, low fat diet, and then there's we got the the low carb, high fat. You got carnivore. There's all different schemes where people. There are people that can maintain a proper weight and reasonably healthy weight on on all of those plans, on anything almost, even junk food. I look in the store and I see people with uh, their their cart is mostly sugary junk and processed and and they look pretty healthy. I mean they're they're not overweight. That I mean it's the minority. I'd say it's maybe no more than 20%. Uh you can look at the cart and kind of project what the person pushing the cart looks like based on what you see in the cart. A lot of the time uh much of the time, but many times you see a person that looks quite normal. My point is on that Maintaining your weight and and not gaining weight are two different uh, are, is is one thing, but for a person who's already messed up, uh, metabolically deranged, overweight, uh, got some degree of insulin resistance going on, uh, maybe has other issues, uh, health issues. Um, let's just say who's got a lot of weight to lose, uh, excess fat everywhere. Um, I don't think there are, I think there's a clear choice in terms of what works to eliminate the weight. Uh, and it's not, it's not uh, like anything goes, you can try any different approach. I don't see people uh, eating a junk food diet and losing weight or uh, eating a, <clears throat> a high carb low fat diet and and losing your weight um without maybe a lot of caloric restriction and it's, and to me that's where that's where it's not going to be sustainable so i i'm, I'm what i'm trying to hear uh, do here is to draw a distinction i know there are people that are successful with all kinds of different diets that are not necessarily a low carb diet or a carnivore diet but for people that are, I, I use the term messed up or, or metabolically way out of balance and need to need to lose fat, visceral fat and uh, fat of all kinds, um, I think there's a clear choice and that's the one to, to reduce carbs as much as possible. And that's, uh, and that's in order to minimize insulin. Um, anyway, that's, I'll get off my soapbox on that. Uh, so I, I guess that's the crux of my, uh, my point, uh, today on maintenance is that, uh, it should flow naturally and you shouldn't get too hung up about having a maintenance plan. Uh, the plan is just to do your lifestyle change and be effective at that. You, and it's not the easy part. That, that's the harder part. Breaking your old habits, that, that is the harder part, and it should be the, I mean, habits are hard to break sometimes. Uh, things we've been doing for years, like uh, addiction to certain foods and to certain situations, these are hard to break. It takes some effort. But once you break your old habits and establish new habits, it sort of becomes a whole different scenario. And um, so that's the point. Do the weight loss correctly. 
establish a new lifestyle with new habits, uh, the maintenance just happens automatically. Uh, you, you don't have to have a special program. It's just part of your new. It's your new life. Welcome to it. You know your your weight uh, doesn't change too much because of everything you've done. Uh, I think I pretty much exhausted that topic. Uh, that's how I feel about maintenance. Um, it's just an extension of your weight loss, and uh, you just continue with your your new your new good habits and uh, everything takes care of itself. Uh, it has for me so far. Um, so I think I'll close out this video today, try not to ramble on too long. Um, again, uh, I mean, uh, thanks uh, for all the new subscribers, uh, wherever you came from, whether it was the interview at Six Miles to Supper or whatever, uh, I, I welcome you here, and uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, I know I've got a number of, uh, I've had a number of nice uh, uh, responses from people saying they've been motivated. Uh, they, like, they like to hear my story, and it gives them hope and inspiration. They're starting their own journey. Uh, that's, I couldn't ask for anything more than that. Uh, that's uh, why, I'm, why I'm out here. So I appreciate all that, folks, and again, uh, Thank you. It's uh, it's uh, gives me a real nice feeling to uh, know that maybe I've caused people to maybe try something new and try to better themselves. Uh, until next time. Until I have another topic. Uh, this is Jim signing off. Have a great day, everyone.